by the end of this tutorial you will be having something like this there is some kind of trailer On interacting with the trigger, we get a pop-up uh, which shows the screen and uh, we can customize our player uh, to our accent uh, like I showed in the last video. When you click next, your player gets that particular avatar with some delay. I have not added animations for this tutorial sake but you can obviously add because this is a simple Unreal rig so all the modifications can be made. So we can just start by creating a character, uh, right click, create, remove rings. And uh, blueprint class, create a character. If we enter score, uh, ready play the game. Let's double click on this. Uh, so, uh, we specifically can add this uh, full skeletal mesh. Put the values uh, minus 20. With that, uh, now we can go to uh, we can add a camera component. So for that, we can add spring. And uh, within spring, we'll add camera. So that camera would follow the uh, parameter. I think it could be a bit. I just need to click that. So with this, the main setup for the character is ready. Now we can add some input fields. So for that, I click inputs. And then we can go to input, input action. I'll name it IA underscore move. And this would be a access vector. I'll duplicate this. And I will make the entire underscore look. Uh, similar to that, that would also be a access vessel. Now I'll create an input map. So it would be I am underscore or uh, let's say a DM character or character. And we can add those mappings over here. Look. Move. So in move, I'll create four things. Uh, with WSD, I will move. So in A and D, we need to add one modifier that would be switches. So it basically changes the input bindings from uh, one axis to other. And with A, we also need to negate it. So negate. In S, also we need to negate it. Here we need to press. We can save this. So this input binding is completed. Now we can go into the player blueprint, and now we need to add some more stuff. So that would be get player controller, and uh, there is a local and as the player subsystem. So uh, in this we need to add mapping. All this is basically standard that uh, Unreal has set for a new input system with a new input system that they have created. Uh, they call it enhanced uh, input system. So yeah, that, that's that. And uh, here we can now add the uh, look as well as the ready underscore move things. In look, we are going to add the yaw and pitch input. So we can separate those uh, X and Y. And here we can write add uh, your as well as add pitch. So in X, I think we can add this and add this. That. Uh, if that is wrong, we can later on change that. So it's not okay. And here also we can just uh, break this. And here we need to add uh, movement input. Thing goes here. Uh, it's just that uh, I'll get a get forward vectors soon. Uh, and make it a rotator. Here I'll get a control input, so control rotation. 
Uh, this is very standard, so if you want a bit detailed uh, outlook in this, I can create some tutorial for that also. And uh, here we can have get the right vector. Go to that. I'll just duplicate this one. So uh, x goes here, y goes here, and y is mostly for the forward thing. So it is goes here, this goes here. And uh, with that, our character input is also completed. We can compile and save this. And now we can create uh, some more blueprints. So that would be character uh, a game mode. Game mode underscore our game. So a game mode consists of all the things that you want to instantiate in. So uh, we want to instantiate our pawn. So we can go to the pawn class and uh, change it to PPR game. And then just compile this, compile save. And now go into map, go into world settings. If it is not visible, you can go into this and directly go for world setting. And select GM underscore RPM. So here you got this. And now if we press play, you will see uh, our player is there. Uh, first of all, I need to remove the old binding that we created. So we can just delete this. It is also compile save. So that we can see the character. So now we can see the uh, input is a bit reversed. So what we need to do is go back in this and uh, just plug this into this and just basically switch the input. So this goes here and this goes just fine. And we also forget one thing to add uh, and that is uh, for loop input. Uh, we need to add our mouse uh, to the access. That should do this. So now we can look around. Uh, this is not working as expected because we need to switch some more properties. It should be this and orient rotation to movement. This. These two, when we check those, uh, now we can look around, we can walk in the direction which we want. So basically, it creates a, a full character controller like for you. So now all things are done. Uh, it's just that it's following the mouse wherever I'm rotating. So we can go back into this, we can collapse all fields, and uh, uh, specifically, we want to go into pawn. And if this thing is ticked, uh, like any of these things, three are ticked, so just untick them. If you want that kind of behavior, that is fine, but uh, uh, we don't want it that. So, yeah, that is there. Now we can add some animations. Animations part I'm leaving in this tutorial uh, because it uh, specifically focuses on ready player thing. So, now we just need to create the UI and uh, get the link back. And we can just basically change this. Thing. So, now in this, we need to add one component named as ready player me. And this component is what we are going to use mostly. So you can select the mix and rig, uh, which is same to uh, what we have done in this. And uh, avatar config it's up to you. Uh, you can change uh, multiple properties such as uh, like the textures, uh, uh, pose configuration, mesh ability and all. If you want high quality textures and high quality mesh, uh, you can uh, play around with these. For now, we'll just keep them default. And now we can compile this, compile and save. Uh, we can create one more uh, blueprint which will serve as a trigger for us. So that would be actor. I will name it BP underscore trigger. And uh, in this we can have a sphere collision. So sphere, or not sphere, not sphere collision. The sphere collision and uh, on this sphere collision we can add one uh, we can overlap thing so uh, what we can do is we can create a widget so create widget and in this create widget uh, we need to spawn our UI and uh, we can add to viewport one additional step for us would be binding that event that we subscribe to. Uh, bind event on avatar generated. So yes, uh, this one. 
and with this what we can do is uh, we can create a new event change avatar uh, right click get player controller uh, player character and we can cast it to our character cast to our pm uh, test uh, we can create some kind of interface for this uh, for better code but uh, for now i'm just uh, using this way and uh, here we need to get ready player me thing which is this component that we added so with this we can say it to load avatar and one thing that they forget uh, on the uh, UI front is uh, in this uh, avatar generated thing, we need to add one input which would be a string input of URL. So I'll just correct my mistake. Uh, and this URL would be this. And this URL thing we need to. So that was the wrong load. Uh, we can go with load new avatar and then we can pass a URL. So uh, that's mostly it. You can bind a new function to this, name it something on success. And uh, we'll just debug it out. So, for instance, new avatar load. We'll just compile and save this. Uh, that should mostly sum up all our improvements. I can drag and drop this, make it a bit bigger. And for now, just for the reference, uh, I'll add a, a sphere also so that we know where it is located. So, this Just for reference purpose, we are doing this. Uh, you can add some kind of Niagara particle effects, make it very fancy. Uh, so we'll go in here. This will okay. We forgot to change the game mode to UI. Uh, so in this, uh, have to do is we just need to show the cursor. For that, we can get the controller and type to mouse cursor and on this event we can again uh, hide the mouse here we go and yeah I think that should be enough I we go back to playing the game Uh, you can disable all this mouse movements uh, while this thing is happening, but for now, uh, we just create that thing. And let's just uh, give it some press and press next. So now uh, it will start loading the avatar. It depends on your preferences. If the settings are quite high, it might take some time. So yeah, as you can see, we have received all the particular body types that we have selected. And you can add some player animations and make it a full-fledged character. As always, thank you so much for watching.